Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today we've got a full width parallax hero slider for you. We've got a slider here, I've got it revolving every five seconds. We've got a title, a bit of text and a call to action button here. And if I roll down the page, we're using a CSS parallax effect here, also known as fixed background. You can use true parallax if you want to, where the image and the background will go up at slightly different rates, but I've gone with CSS parallax as they call it here, or fixed background. And that's a pretty dramatic little thing to have on your site. As you can see, that mountain stays there as we're rolling down the page. Really easy to do. As I say, we've got a call to action button. And this is full width and totally responsive. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder so we can build on the front end. OK, let's go down and I'll delete the section we've got here. All right, well, I'm going to add a new section. I'll add it down the bottom here and we'll drag it up to the top. Blue button for a section. I'm going to use a full width section for this today. The little purple button. We've got a more limited amount of modules we can put in our full width section. You can always make a regular section full width if you want to use one of those modules. But today I'm using the full width that's built for the full width section here. I'm going to use the full width slider on the bottom left there. And here we are. It's all automatically put it in. Before I start customizing, let's put it where we want it, which is on the top of the page. So I'm going to hit the purple button. I'm going to go to this little icon here, which will show us our sections. There's our full width section in the purple there. I can just drag it up to the top. It just makes it easier than trying to drag it over live sections if you drag it by the handle up here. OK, well, let's go into the module. We've got a purple tab for our full width section and the dark tab for the module. You may have noticed there's no actual row in the full width section here. So let's go into the module, the dark tab here. I'll get our layers out of the way. Let's go into our module. There we go. And by default, it's put in two little slides. I'm going to delete the second one and we'll work on the first one here. I'm going to hit the little cog to go into this slide. And here we are. We've got a title here. Obviously, put your title in there. For what you want your button to say, put it here. And if we roll down, we've got our body text here. And this is a regular text section. You can add regular text. You can justify it. You can add little titles if you want to. And you can bold, italicize, and actually add media if you want to. I could add my logo above this if I wanted to. So put in whatever you need there. Down below, you've got an option to add an image or a video if you want to. They'll come in from the left hand side. I'm not going to use these today. I'll just pop one in to show you what it's going to look like. We go up here to add image. As you can see, it adds the image on the left hand side and it will do a similar thing for a video too. But I really don't want that today, so I'm going to get rid of that. Great. So if we roll down. I've got a call to action button here that I can link to something. If you want it to also link somewhere else, look in the link right here. And we've got the option to add a button link. Obviously put your URL for where you want to take people when they hover over your button and click on it. Always best practice. If you're linking to your own site, link it, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab so that your site stays open. Now, if you want the whole module to link to somewhere, you can put another link here, here if you want to, as well as the call to action button. You can have a completely separate one for the actual slide itself. Or, of course, you can put the same link in if you want to make sure they go to the right place. And obviously, best practices apply there. OK, for the background, this is where things get interesting for me. There's a background color in there. I'll just leave that. You can take it away if you want to. I'm going to use an image for mine. So I'm going to click Add Background Image. Let's grab that same image. 
as you can see that pops that in the background there just to make this a little bit more interesting I'm going to use a parallax effect and just down below you'll find parallax effect if you flip this to on default setting is true parallax so we can roll this up and down and I don't know if you'll notice the actual image is moving at a slightly different rate from the rest of the site there that's true parallax but I'm going to flip mine to CSS background today which will be more dramatic and it'll keep that image exactly where it is when we roll up the site there okay presuming that you've got everything you want there let's roll down we can go over to our design and some of this writing is getting a little lost in that sunset here so I'm going to use a bit of an overlay and you can use overlay just over the text if you want to just flip that to on and you can see we've got some dark background behind the text there or you can turn that off and use it on the whole thing I think that's what I'll use for this particular slide you can go down here and choose your color if you want to for overlays I tend to use a black and then I'll click on the field right now it's pretty much black and the second slider over here opacity the variegated slider the more you pull it down the more it's going to reveal of that image behind so take it down so you can nicely read the text there so it's so it's easy to read for your visitors and there we have it that works perfectly for me okay down below that we've got navigation navigation is the little arrows that appear we won't see them right now because we've only got one slide and pagination is the little dot if I open and the dot navigation which will appear underneath so let's add a couple more slides presuming that we're happy with the style here so we'll save this it'll take us back to the main slider settings up here and let's clone it and add another one so I'm going to hit the two little squares to clone it and let's start working on the second one I'm going to leave everything pretty much exactly the same obviously I'll call this slide 2 I'll leave the button and the text exactly as they are again I don't want any image or video all I'm going to do with this one is change the actual background so I'm going to go over to our background image again and I'm going to flip this out for a different background and there we have it that works for me we've still got our parallax effect and I'm liking the look of our writing over there that's really easy to read so I'm not going to change anything right there so let's do exactly the same I'm going to save this it'll take us back to the main slider settings and let's add another one again and again I'm just going to simply clone this we'll go into the third one there and again for the image we'll change that image up this time let's perhaps use a little bit of text overlay so let's go to our design And I'm going to turn the background overlay off and turn the text overlay on that's fine for me I'm not too happy with these buttons but rather than go into each one and change them we can do it globally so if we save our slide settings again here back in the full width slider settings we've got global de design elements here as well so if I go to design here's the overlay here's the navigation now we've got three slides you'll see the arrows appear there I'm going to leave mine just as they are you can go in and color them and change them any way you want and the same with the dots down the bottom there they work absolutely fine for me if we go down you can style your text regularly like this if you want to style it all and this is going to do all your slides remember because we're in the main slider settings here I'm going to leave mine in the middle here but you can also go down change your title and body text and you can do these separately Divi by default has an absolutely crazy amount of fonts here and you can even upload fonts if you need to I'm going to leave mine on the default but if you want to choose a different font just simply roll over one and it'll give you an example of what that font looks like and there's plenty to choose from as I say I'm going to leave mine on the default today that's great and you can do exactly the same for the body text also 
Okay, well, I wanted to style these buttons up. And like I say, I don't want to do them individually. You can have different buttons on each slide if you want to. As I'm in the full width slider settings here, it'll do all of them for me at once. So I'm going to go into the button here. I'm going to say use custom styles for button. Text size is absolutely fine. Text color is fine and white. I am going to give it a button background though here. Let's give it a purple. There we go. And when they hover over it, I want it to change color to blue. Now this is common to most Divi modules. If you hover over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's an arrow there, which there is in this case, we can click on it and it'll give us a desktop state when the mouse is not on it and a hover state, meaning when the mouse is actually on it. Now go to the one that you actually want to affect, which is back button background in our case here. For the hover state, I'm going to turn it blue. So we've got blue on hover and purple when we're not hovering over it. And I think I'll take that little border away from the button if we roll down a little bit you've got button border width here pop that down to zero or well, of course you can just make it whatever colors you want for hover and regular state as you see we've got a little arrow there for doing that if you need to if you want to make your button have rounded corners you can give it a value here at the moment we've got tiny little slightly rounded corners if I put this up to 25 it's a lot more rounded and you can actually go crazy with it. You've got your peel shape button there. If you turn that pixel value to a percentage, it'll make the whole thing oval. So just put the percent sign in there. And as you can see, you've got an oval button. But I'm happy for it to have just slightly rounded corners. So I'm gonna put say five picks in. Just put the five in, it'll put the picks in for you. If you do something and decide that you don't like it and can't remember how it was, for the default simply select it de delete it it'll go back to the default for you okay well there we go if you want to change your letter spacing you can do so there and of course you've got those crazy number of fonts there as well if you want to show a button icon you can flip this to yes and then choose your icon down below and there's a lot to choose from Divi's just partnered up with Font Awesome, so there's an awful lot to choose from here. You can either scroll through, and there's a lot of scrolling, or put in a search. Or you can hit this little icon over here, and it'll pop out into a breakout box, so you can see more at once. But like I say, there's plenty of them. But I'm not going to use an icon for my sliders today. Okay. Well, there's nothing else I particularly want to do. We could give our little button a little bit of box shadow if you wanted to, to lift it off the page a little bit. But apart from that, I'm fairly happy. Now, sizing wise, if you wanted to make this full height of whatever device they're looking at it on, you can go into sizing. And in the height here, you've got height. You could put 100 VH, 100 VH. And that's going to stretch it to 100% of the viewable height. We've got a little gap there. This is just because we're in the builder and I've changed the settings on it. But it'll be 100% of the height of whatever device it's being used on. I'm happy for mine to be the default size. So I can delete that. It'll go back to how it was. And if you wanted to make it larger or smaller you can simply put a value in here let's say make it 600 pixels and again just put in the 600 it'll put in the pixels for you that's made it shorter make it 900 which is probably about where it was that's a bit bigger than it was and the little gap you see there is again just because we're in the builder that'll disappear on the front end when we save this but I'm happy with the way it was so again I'm just gonna delete it okay well one of the most important things is you want this rolling round automatically you don't want people to have to click on the little arrows or buttons to make it roll or at least i don't if you do that's fine just leave it as it is i want this to be automated though still on the design tab let's roll on down we've got animation at the bottom there you'll find automatic animation if you don't see this you're probably in one of your slides make sure you're not in one of your slides here because if you're in one of your slides that doesn't appear 
So make sure you're out of your slides, slide settings, back to the full width slider settings, design tab, all the way down the bottom. Here's our animation. I'm going to turn mine to on. And let's get it animating every five seconds, which would be 5,000 milliseconds. The default seven seconds, they're a bit too much for me. Don't want to continue automatic slide on hover. That way when they put their mouse on it, it'll actually stop so they can read the writing and give them a chance to look at the image and click on the button if they want to. So I think I'm good to go here. Let's save our changes. We'll go down here, we'll save our page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder and see what we've got. And there we go, there's our first slide. And it should have CSS parallax. As you see, that image is staying exactly where it is when we roll up and down the page. It's going to pause when we hover our mouse over it. We can click on our button, which is going to change color there. And when we're ready, we take the mouse away and it will continue sliding every five seconds. So there's our first one. There's our second one. Let's check its parallax. Yep, fantastic. Or fixed background. Yep, same for that one. Fantastic. So there you go, guys. We've now got an automatic parallax full width slider. Really easy to do, and that's a great thing to have on your home page. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.